Okay, so video for the new Canera Imperial Loki Emerald. I believe that's what it's called. That's the full name. This is a Money Trees level set. It's $3,000 above. Um, if you are interested in possibly winning this set, this would be the comment section to comment in. You have to be a subscriber, I confirm, and give it a like if you genuinely like the video. This will be broken into two parts. The first part, I'm going to unbox and show you what you would get. That's a lot of money to pay. Exactly what are you getting for that money outside of the totally subjective sound impressions which I will talk about in the second half of this video. Let's go ahead and start with the unbox. Again this would be a limited edition to get this. This is essentially just a extra carry case but it's kind of cool so I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you real quick. Open it up. Comes with a pimp daddy kind of suede velvety crown royal type of cover on it. I think it looks really nice actually. Get this off. And you got a little, like a little businessman, like a little short person, um, briefcase. It's very cool. I like it. And so it's not going anywhere. You can put your dap in here. I think most would fit in here. That's the SP3000CU. That fits fine. I wonder if the new KN is actually going to fit. That'll be interesting. Put some of your favorite cables here. You could put uh, all kinds of stuff. You could configure it in the way that you want. It's a very nice touch and it is part of the package if you are an early buyer. So that's that and I think that's really nice. It's a cool touch. It's practical and it will get used as opposed to other things that are sometimes included. The case is maybe familiar to you, though I think this feels a little bit larger. I should have grabbed some of the other ones, but this feels a little bit, just a little bit bigger. Um, the Canera Imperial series, there's some other ones that have a case that look just a lot like this. I think they're just, just a little bit smaller. This is into two different stacks. So you take the cover off of this one. Underneath you got the rice paper. Then you've got a graph that's done by the company that is actually pretty close to accurate. There's a little divot right there where the bone conduction is putting some energy right here. And then it does it here, but you can't really see it. Bone conduction drivers generally, the ones that are used a lot recently have energy here a kind of a dip and then more energy kind of up in this area so it's interesting how those functions and you can just see a hint of it in this some of the Empire Year sets also you can see now we look at the set I already took these protective covers off if I were to do this in a giveaway I would put them back on so you can have those I want you to see the full color of it camera doesn't capture it's very beautiful this is an effect audio cable that comes stock with it which is a really nice touch let me go ahead and pull this out. It is a uh, 4.4 cable. Again, this is a very well-known and pricey brand. The exact version of this cable uh, is probably somewhere right in front of my face. I'm just not sure which one it is. Let me get this out without snapping the two pin. Okay. Here we go. And it's already got my spin fit tips on it. Take this off. It's got a, it's made out of a kind of a plastic. It's got a sparkly, I think it looks really nice. It's got the nozzles. Show what that is. You can see the bores is one, two, three, four bores on there. It's got breather holes three over here. Uh, it's a well put together set. The cable is absolutely really, really nice. And there's actually more. So there's that. The cable is of high quality. Put that down. That pretty much is the top stack. So I'll move that over. On the bottom stack, you have another rice paper that's got their uh, Canera Imperial logo on it. And then you've got a case to put your earphones. And within that case, you've got another cable. Brand, I'm not sure. But it is quite nice. It's a fabric type of case. I have not tried this one yet to see if it's got uh, microphonics, which can sometimes happen with these. But it looks very nice. And it's very, 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 very easy to manage. Some of my favorites, like the Venom Liquid Links, um, I think that's the name of it. It's really, it's like a whip. This is, this is very easy to manage. Um, and I think it's a Canera cable because it's got their logo on the side on the strap. So there's that. Then you've got a smorgasbord of tips. They really gave you everything. You've got SpinFit CP145. 
small, medium, large. You've got Symbio, which is like a foam type. You've got Alza, Crystal, small, medium, large. Take that out. It's not done. There's still more. I believe there's final audio tips inside here. You've got a wipe cloth. You've got the final E tips right here. So you've got final spin fits, Symbio, and Alza tips. So you really got everything. And then you've got, I think, literature in here. Yeah, that's what that is. Maybe owner certification and stuff like that. So that's pretty much what you get with the unboxing. You get a nice, um, high quality cable from a well known brand that charges a lot of money, Effect Audio, that comes with it stock. You get another cable that comes with it that is maybe a Canera or a collab with Canera and another company that seems very nice. I haven't used it. You got every, a lot of almost every tips that there are out there. And if you're one of the early adopters, you get the case. So that's the unboxing. Let's go ahead and migrate and talk about how this actually sounds. Okay, so video for the Canera Imperial Loki Emerald Edition. This is a $3,000 set of earphones. Um, it comes, there's gonna be an unboxing that you've seen already, or I'm gonna put after this video. You can check the chapters. I will do chapters for this. Um, if you wanna take the chance of maybe winning this set and have the first Money Tree set of your life, um, comment below to qualify. You gotta be a subscriber that I can confirm to qualify. And then like the video if you genuinely like it, cause that helps with the algorithm. Um, this is a quad grid. It has four Sonian ESTs, six balanced armatures, one bone conduction driver, and one dynamic driver. I'm going to look at the graph over here. It has sub bass over mid bass. It's got slightly dip mids. It's got an upper mids that's slightly forward, and it's got extension that goes on forever. Um, the two sets, maybe I'll put up the border right now, that I'm going to compare it to might seem interesting, but there's a story there. One of them is going to be the Odin because it's got a, it's got a multi driver configuration. It's got the same almost dip in the mids, almost the same sub bass mid bass. It's got a forward upper mids. It's differing in the upper mid treble, but it's, that's just handling fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth order harmonics differently. There's notable subtle differences, but it's not radically different. The basic meat of these sets are more similar than dissimilar. And then one that seems like it's totally not belonging would be the Mess Mark III, yet it is the most similar to the set that I got right now, which is the Loki. Graph doesn't say it. Graphs are awesome. A lot of people talking about them right now. Don't, people need as much info as they can get. They got limitations though, and this is a good example of them. The Mess Mark III contains a bone conduction driver like the Loki does. It's, a, it's got impact. If you've ever seen a bone conduction driver, isolated. And there's a lot of people that work with them. I've worked with them through companies that I can't mention because of NDAs. They have mid bass energy, usually between 100 hertz and 400 hertz. There's a boost that you've got to push down. And if you look at some unique uh, melody and definitely Empire Ears, you see this odd notch. You can go look at your leisure at, at anybody's graph. And you, what what is that notch right there? That is a relic or a, kind of that tip of the BCD's energy not being completely covered. I think it's a clever way to do it because it doesn't interfere really with the sonics, but it does give the, the user kind of a visual proof that that thing is in there. And then it, there typically is a drop compared to there in the mids. And again, it rises up around two to four kilohertz and then has a range where you've got to take that down too. So in the upper mid region where the Mess Mark III looks like it's lacking and is going to be kind of like a Dunu, no, it doesn't sound like that at all. And all of the people that have bought the Mess, whether it's the first, the second, the third, or the Indigo, they like their vocals and that's the most popular unique melody series ever because it's they implemented the bone conduction driver well. My point is, going the long way, actually, despite that graph looking like this isn't a ca valid comparison, the Mess Mark III is the most similar in Sonics that I can come up with to the Loki. Graph be damned, these two sound quite a lot alike. I'm going to take out the Odin, actually, and my border should already reflect it. A Mess Mark III, uh, and I guess the Odin is up there, but really the comparison will be with the, the Mess Mark III. 
Now I'm going to put scores up for this and the Mess Mark III. I'm going to give both of them a 7 out of 10. The Loki contains a 6mm dynamic driver and it is notable, noticeable sometimes. Um, but perhaps because of the dip and the perception of the base is increased because of the dip. It's, it's perception. Um, they don't sound that much different. There's some things I think I would take the Mess Mark III a little bit over, but just an evaluation of how it plays back drums, a uh, four-string, five-string bass guitar, these are very comparable, and I, I can't take a point from one or the other. And just because of the mental bias that a six-millimeter driver might put on me, it doesn't come out in the replay. So they both get a seven. I think the mids are the same as well. Despite being radically different in the presentation, I mean all of the mids. The mids and the upper mids are completely different. They sound and how they handle vocals and how they handle guitar, piano, not that different. It's a testament to BCDs actually having merit and value and not being a meme. Um, they, they actually do quite a lot. The treble is a 7 out of 10. It's handling it differently than the mess, but I would say that the mess is more intense than the Loki, but the graph would tell you otherwise. There's, there's, there's this growing thing about graphs being only, only telling you part of the story. I think we all knew that at the beginning. It's just that this is more and more of people coming out and saying, I don't think the graph reflects it. it. It's not. It's an amplitude scale. It's capturing how much drivers or a combination of drivers are pushing up certain bands of frequency on a scale that goes from uh, 20 to 20 kilohertz. It's very valuable, especially for people to get the gist of what they like and not fail with their purchases, but it's not going to tell you uh, how much resolution, how much detail. There's a lot of things that are lacking on that. Those don't look like they're the same. The green one looks like it'd be more fatiguing. The Mess Mark III is the faster to fatigue than the Loki. I listen to them both. That's the way it is. And I'm a big fan of the Mark III. I would say that resolution is where the Mess Mark III, for reasons that I can't get my mind around, are just a little bit better. The Loki exhibits something that um, I would describe as if you look at the dynamic range and you see the sharp peaks and the ups and downs of a dynamic range on a scale. And some people talk about blunted or smooth where that the tips of that are rounded instead of spiked. Like they're slightly compressed. That would be the phenomenon that the Loki exhibits. And as I turn up the ADI2 deck to try to... It's an instinct to want to power out of that. You can't. But again, you can put a lot of power into Loki and it doesn't start screaming at you. The graph looks like it would. I thought it would when I saw the graph before I actually got this set. Um, I thought, wow, that's going to be intense. Not as much as I thought. And when I tried to turn it up and think that that's coming, it never does. Let's talk about what this sounds good with. This sounds good with what I'm listening to now. Oh, I'm not listening to ACDC anymore. It sounds awesome with that. Crunchy guitar is a typical rock and roll band. It sounds excellent. There's not an overemphasis in the harmonics of guitars with distortion pedals. So it goes good with stuff like this. It goes good with stuff like Metallica, Nirvana, Grunge. The busier, the better. This handles that like an absolute champion. It actually does Fleetwood Mac. Very good. Male and female vocals sound excellent. I'm not going to scroll all the way over. Um, can't find my way home Lindsay Buckingham pretty much uh, the chain Goldest Woman the, those all sound excellent they're very appealing it's a slightly different replay because that dip in the mids is actually there but it's it's a pleasant replay actually so I think it does great with male and female vocals I think it does just okay with um, stuff like Big Boy Kill Jill which is actually right here Lucky um, and interesting enough Neil Young if you've ever heard his voice, it's kind of honky. For some reason, Neil hits great or is a strikeout. And this is one of the sets that wouldn't sound good with Neil Young. Actually, Jim Croce as well. Acoustic guitars with male vocals are putting the male vocals really front and center. And it's not, that's not the, it does it fine, but if I got to find the weak point of sets. A uh, typical rock configuration would do better to my ears than a uh, uh, acoustic player like uh, Jim Croce or uh, Neil Young with a harmonica on a stool. It's not really what I would do with this set, actually. Um, the price is $3,000. The configuration is 4 EST, 6 PA, 1 BCD, and 1 dynamic driver. The efficiency is at 107. The impedance is 12 ohms. Um, 
first impressions are what I just gave you. Full review will be coming and with that review will be probably when I will pass this to some lucky winner. Um, do I recommend it? If you pay this much money for IMs or you even consider paying this much money for IMs, I think it's something that you should listen to more input from. With my library, I think it does really good. I would have liked a larger dynamic driver, actually. Um, but the tuning, despite me looking at it when I first got it and thinking, oh, that dip in the mids and that extension and that upper mids, that's going to... All of what I thought might be an issue wasn't. And what I didn't think about, which would be this kind of not compressed, but a smoothness, a slight blunting compared to a Mess Mark III, if you're familiar with that, to some extent the Odin. That's not something that a uh, frequency graph can capture. And, and matter of fact, I would expect it would be the opposite because of the upper mids and trouble, that it would be kind of up in your face. It's, it's not, actually, which is interesting. It's fascinating the more you listen to. I've listened to thousands of sets in my life, and I'm still surprised, which is kind of fun. What I thought the set was and what it really is is not the same thing. I think it does my library well. I think for people who can't afford a $1,000 IM, you shouldn't even be considering it because why would you? You can just save your money. If you exist in this realm, and I, to my estimation, there's between two and 10,000 active, cutting edge, money is no object people in this hobby that will purchase either very expensive desktop amps, the latest app, uh, IMs, one or two, like, like nothing. Two to 10,000 automatically. For that group of people, get your ears on this at a can jam or get a demo at a place that sells it i think it i think it would be surprising relative to its graph and possibly a learning experience and possibly a purchase it's a nice set does really good um i like it i'll compare it in a money trees edition to the subtonic storm um and some other sets that i'm fans of fan of there's not multiple me's i'm moving on and moving out this video is over and i'm out Come on.